Hello my darlings, today I'm delivering to you a Kirishima story. I hope you enjoy this just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before I dive right into it, I would like to remind you to like the video or dislike the video, uh, comment something down below and watch the video until the end. The reason why this is very, very, very important is because this enhances my standing in a YouTube algorithm. And the higher my standing in a YouTube algorithm is, well, um, the more people will watch my stuff. And I would greatly appreciate it if more people watch my stuff, because then I make a little bit more money out of this. And uh, if I can live off of YouTube, I actually have more time writing. So I could write longer and better stories. Yay! Um, I would also appreciate any fan art you could send my way. My Discord is down in the description. Just send it into the fan art uh, 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 channel that I have there. Uh, I don't care what kind of fan art it is. You can even draw me in porn. As a matter of fact, I would greatly appreciate if you draw me in porn. Just ship me with a couple of cute characters. Come on, you, you can do it. I'm strapped, by the way, just saying. And my wife was Rumi. And Ning Wang. And Mafet. All right, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. Bakugo Katsuki, Shoto Todoroki, Kirishima Ejiro, and Kaminari had been in a game of truth or dare for about a month now. It had started as a simple bet from the electric blonde to the cool hot guy Shoto, and devolved into a childish party game that the four boys took way too serious. Under the guise of the game, Kaminari had eaten rotten eggs. Eggs as in plural. Bakugo had been hanging around in the dorm's common room in just his underwear. And Shoto even went so far as to change the ringtone on his phone to a rather crude rap song with way too many expletives. However, now it was Kirishima's turn. And Kaminari, who was still upset over the stunt over the eggs, gleefully came up with the most potentially humiliating dare. I dare to ask that weird girl out. Everyone in the friend group knew who he meant. It was you. You were born with a mutation quirk that gave you plant-like properties. From your knees down, your legs ended in long, heavy roots that you used to maneuver similarly to a snake. And flower-like scent was always wafting around you. You were even able to root yourself into loose dirt and absorb nutrients from the ground. There were a few problems, though. For one, your vocal cords were very primitive, only able to speak in grunts and shouts. In fact, loud screams were part of your abilities. As you reached just the right wavelength to disorient, confuse and even deafen opponents. Another problem came at around elementary school. You were unable to show emotions. You still had them, of course, but most of the time all you did was stare at people with a deadpan expression. Almost robotic, or, well, planned like What no one really understood was that you showed your emotions. Suddenly. So subtly and hidden, not even you yourself knew about it. But Kirishima was about to find that out. It was the end of classes for today, and Aizawa had already left the classroom. You were usually the last to leave the classroom, but not today. Kirishima glanced over to you. You were staring out the window at a non-specific spot. What were you thinking? The red had wondered. He could never tell. But he had to admit to himself, if it wasn't for your strange legs, he'd be attracted to you. He continued gazing, trying to push himself to actually get the right amount of courage. When you seemingly snapped back to reality and began packing your stuff, it was now or never. Pulling out his phone and starting an audio recording, before putting it into his pockets. 
He hoped desperately it would be able to capture everything. Then the boy got on his feet. After hearing him approach, you stopped packing and sat up straight, looking at him with a neutral expression. He smiled awkwardly as he came closer. The faint smell of fruit entered his nostrils. He couldn't really pinpoint which one. But it was sweet and pleasant. <laughs> hey, he started, scratching the back of his head. How are you? Good job, Kirishima, you goddamn loser, shouted his inner voice. You didn't react, continuing to simply stare at him. He was starting to get uncomfortable. As if he wasn't already. He quickly realized just how difficult this might be after all. Kishima now understanding just how insidious this dare had been. And he wished he was anywhere but here. He tapped the tip of his right foot on the ground. And after a deep sigh, he simply decided to finish this. How about this? Um... Come to my dorm room at 8 p.m. and we watch a movie on my laptop or something. At this point, any other girl would smugly grin, decline, or worse, make a dumb remark and then decline. You, however, kept just looking at him. Occasional blinking. With bated breath, he stood there. What kind of movie would you like to see? He awaited any response or reaction from you. It was like talking to a Chinese doll. Almost creepy. He suppressed a sigh. Anime? He asked slowly. This was getting silly. Kishima blinked. Ah... Uh, you know, I'll just come up with something, he said hastily, before saying... He said hastily, before adding, uh, see you then. After that, he left the classroom. As soon as the door closed behind him, he exhaled, the tension finally being released. Kishima took out his phone and stopped the recording, and then sent it to the others. Around evening he was sitting with his fellow players in the common room of the 1A dorms, listening to what Kirishima had done earlier. Respect, said Kaminari with a grin. I could not have done it. Why? retorted Bakugo. You're the pervert here. Uh, she's not my type said the electric blonde to the explosive blonde. Well, who's next then? Shoto, said Kirishima with a grin. Truth or dare? All eyes turned to the quiet one. Todoroki hasn't spoken a word since he received the recording. But when he finally opened his mouth, a counter-question left his lips. What if she actually shows up? Immediately the atmosphere shifted only now to finally understand the possible ramifications of the dare. You asked a girl out. Admittedly, she didn't say yes, or anything for that matter, but she also didn't say no. Crap, thought Kirishima. It was a dare, mumbled the redhead. She doesn't know that. Bakugo sighed. If she wanted to go out with him, she should have said yes. Todoroki crossed his arms and snarled back. She can't talk, you brainless dude, bro. I'll kill you, shouted Bakugo. Todoroki smirked. <laughs> Kalejiro first. It looks like he needs that right now. The redhead was panicking. His eyes widened in horror and sweat forming on his forehead. Look, let's... All right, all right, let's... Uh... Let's see this rationally, said Todoroki with an amused chuckle. Is there anything you like about her? Kishima shrugged. She's cute. Looks-wise, I mean. A quirk is kinda badass, 
but like she never says or does anything. I don't know what she likes or dislikes even. Kaminori clapped his hands. Fine, then we figure it out. Bakugo growled. Not gonna happen. If he goes around asking the girls, someone is bound to get suspicious. I'm so dead, complained the redhead. Anime is a good start, though, muttered Todoroki. Put on a show you like, and uh, a girl with zero anime knowledge would at least tolerate. Coming out, he burst into laughter. <laughs> I don't even know if a show like that exists. <laughs> Shoto sighed. <sighs> the obvious answer is a slice of life romance show with just enough comedy to be entertaining for you and romantic enough for the girl. You absolute moron. Todoroki was getting a little mad at the lack of tactfulness his friends had. Then again, the fact alone that they had to discuss this was borderline insanity to him. But this was probably a result of him having an older sister who enjoyed these kinds of things, so he knew what to do and say. The discussion went on, occasionally turning heated. Especially when Kaminari figured out that Bakugo actually enjoyed a romantic magical girl anime called Nya Nya Cutie Kissy Pomf Pomf. When the clock hit 7.30, Kirishima got up and went the march of shame to his room. He quickly picked up some dirty clothes, threw away some fast food trash and turned on his laptop. And then he waited. And waited. And waited. He sighed a sigh of relief when the clock hit 8.10 and was about to leave to tell his friends. But when he opened the door and saw you standing right in front of it, he almost shrieked. With a heavily pounding heart, he looked right into your eyes. Uh, uh, he gulped. Afraid. Afraid like you were about to kill him. You came, he said with a forced smile. For a moment, the two of you just stared at each other. Come in. Uh, yeah. Uh, come in, he said hastily. You slithered inside, not breaking eye contact with him. And he closed the door behind you. Kishima sighed. Look, I really didn't think you'd show up. Um, also, were you in front of the door for the past ten minutes? No reaction, as expected. The redhead sighed. Well, uh, I got this anime suggestion from a friend. He pointed towards his bed. Why don't we sit and enjoy it? Without even a nod, you gently set yourself down on his bed. Hands neatly folded between your legs. At least you had manners, he thought. After sitting down next to you, surpassing the obvious... <laughs> suppressing the need to outright say, Time to plant myself next to you, he turned on the show. It was very schlocky. But the scent that was seemingly always around you intensified each time he clicked on the next episode button. There, shoulder on shoulder, you two silently watched. The fruity smell making his mind clouded. He couldn't help but enjoy it. Feeling drowsy, his head nuzzled against your shoulder. Once again, you didn't react, but somehow he could feel that there was something. He yawned when an idea plopped into his head. Kishima excused himself for a moment. The redhead snuck into his toilet and opened his private chat with Todoroki. Dude, he texted. She actually came. I think she waited for ten minutes in front of my door, unmoving, but anyways. He gulped and kept typing. How does she smell like? Sent. Thirty seconds later, he read the reply. Uh, good. 
that she came, I mean. Uh, good that she came, I guess, but whenever I was around her, she just smelled vaguely sweet, but nothing specific. The boy bit his lower lip and answered, She smells like exotic fruits, man. No, she doesn't. Wait, does she? After a moment of silence, Todoroki answered his own question. I'm thinking what I'm thinking. Kishima deadpanned. That she had a thing for me for a while and in a sense reacted by probably unintentionally releasing a very pleasant smell. Idra didn't wait for Todoroki to reply. Feeling suddenly more confident, he left the bathroom. You were still there, sitting on his bed, staring at him, unmoving. And slowly approached. With a half smirk, he softly said, Hey, wanna keep watching? Once again, you didn't react. But the fruity aroma intensified for a small moment.